Hi, this is Alex Fernandez with Bud and Doug Walters Auto Sales here in Kalamazoo, Michigan. Today I'll be doing a video going over the primary features inside of this 2018 Honda Accord EXL. We'll begin by talking about the touchscreen here on top of the dash, along with the buttons along either side of it. We'll then work our way down to the climate control, some buttons here in the center console. We'll work our way over to the steering wheel and the buttons on it along with the stocks behind the steering wheel and the screen and the gauge cluster there on the left side. We'll then look at some buttons and switches here to our left. And finally, just a handful of things up above us here. So we'll begin here in the touch screen display. This is where you'll interact with things like your radio or audio, uh, hooking up a phone for Bluetooth, Android Auto and Apple CarPlay, as well as things like your backup camera. You'll see here we have several different applications or functions laid out on this first page. And there's an arrow there to access the rest. We are able to rearrange these if necessary. Before we talk about that, I'll just kind of dive into each function and show what they do. First thing we'll start with is the phone. You'll see we have an icon here on the screen, as well as up at the top and a physical button here to the right side. Pressing any one of those would take us into the phone section here. We have no devices connected, so it's asking us if we'd like to connect a new device. If we accept that prompt, the vehicle will begin to search for available devices, and your phone would then display on the screen. You have to have your Bluetooth settings open on your compatible smartphone or Bluetooth equipped phone to be able to connect to the vehicle. Since we're not gonna pair up a phone, we're just gonna push this back button here for right now. When you do have a phone paired up, you will have your contacts and your call logs all synced up. And when your phone calls come through, it will display the contact name of the person calling you if you have it saved or just the number if you do not. Next thing we'll go to is our audio section. In this case, audio is broken up on this main page by the different sources. We have FM, Bluetooth, satellite radio, and on the next page we have USB 1 and 2 and AM. We're going to open FM just for example. Along the bottom here we have seek buttons. We also have those here as a physical button. We have a tune button, which does allow us to type in the direct station number and jump right to it. We have our scan button. We have station list, which allows you to actually scroll through stations in the area. And you can refresh that if you're in a different area. Up at the top, we have settings as it pertains to our radio. So we have high definition radio. That's a clearer, crisper signal when it's available. And then artwork, if the uh, station that you're listening to can provide the artwork or does provide the artwork for what you're listening to it would be able to display that on the screen in this middle section here we have our presets you see we can just jump right between those by pressing on them if we wanted to set a new preset simply choose the station you'd like to set and press and hold and wait for the beep and you'll see that that's now set as that new preset we have our uh, sound settings next, and that's bass, mid, range, and treble. You can adjust that, and the subwoofer. We have our balance and fade, which allows you to move that sound to the front, to the rear, to the right, or to the left. And then we have DTS neural sound, which is just a way to make your sound sound a little better. And lastly, speed volume compensation it will turn the volume up as your vehicle speed increases and you can adjust how uh, effective or how much that effect is in play by increasing or decreasing it. We do have volume dial here and our tuning dial here. So we rotate that just to move through each of those different stations. We have a source button here, pressing that opens up the ability to switch between AM, FM, satellite, USB, Bluetooth, or the Android Auto slash Apple CarPlay connections. 
we will talk about that next. A smartphone connection here is grayed out. We don't have anything plugged in or available. What that would allow us to do is run the applications called Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. What those are are apps that run on the respective Android and Apple smartphones. And you're able to plug your phone into the car with the USB cable. Once you've plugged into the USB port of the vehicle, you'll then, on your iPhone, the application is built in and it will pull itself up automatically and start running. On the Android phones for Android Auto, you do have to install the app in the Google Play Store and then run through the setup process the first time that you open it when you're plugged into the vehicle. What those apps allow you to do is make and receive phone calls, text messages, also run music or podcasts or any like audio apps that you have in your phone, as well as using your favorite navigation apps such as Google Maps, Apple Maps, or Waze. And that will all display right on the screen of the car here and they also have full voice control for using that. Some of the other icons we have here, we have settings. We needed to change any display settings, sound settings, uh, vehicle settings, things like that are all present in this menu. Our trip computer, we're able to see our, see our current drive, see range, how far we can drive with the amount of gas in the vehicle, our average fuel economy currently, and for the previous drive. And then we have trip one and two, or A and B in this case, and you can see the previous gas mileage achieved on those previous drives. In that settings, we're able to reset or delete that trip history if necessary. SMS messages, if your phone is compatible, you'll be able to receive your texts and the vehicle will read them out to you. We have satellite radio and Bluetooth audio. We have a connected device. We have USB 1 and 2 and AM radio. Those are just different sources. We have our clock screen if you just want to see that clock display. Honda Link, which is a app that requires you to um, enable it in the vehicle. You don't have to use it if you didn't want to. But you install the Honda Link app on your phone and then connect to the vehicle with that respective phone. And the last thing we have is a compass display. And we're inside right now so we're not getting any information on that at the moment. To cover some of the other buttons here, the home button always takes us back to this page here. Our back button will bring us out of a certain function back to the screen we were previously at. This button here allows us to adjust the brightness of the screen. So in our daytime mode, we can increase and decrease that brightness. If we press it again, it accesses the nighttime mode and we can increase and decrease that brightness. And then the third click will turn the screen off altogether. We have those seek buttons down at the bottom. On the right side, we have a clock, our phone, our audio, and our audio source button there. Moving down to the climate control, we have dual zone climate control, so we have the driver's side control here, passenger side control here. Simply rotate the dial clockwise for warmer, counterclockwise for cooler. Your fan speed is right in the middle. As you rotate that, you'll see the display show up. You have your mode button here, which allows you to adjust where the air is being sent to. We have our recirculate mode here, your front defroster, rear defroster and heated side view mirrors, air conditioning, then we have heated seats for passenger and for driver, and then we have buttons within each three of these dials. We have auto mode, which allows you to set the temperature and the car takes care of the rest for you. We have the on off switch, which turns that climate control off to all together. And then we have our sync button, which pairs up the passenger and the driver's zones. To change that or turn that function off, simply adjust the passenger temperature. And you'll see now that they are separate and can be changed without affecting one another. If you'd like to pair them back up, simply push that sync button and you'll see that they connect back together and the driver's side gains control of both zones. Down below we have a cubby here, which does have USB port, as well as a 12 volt power outlet inside. Looking at our center console, we have our econ mode here, 
that econ mode when pressed will display a message on the screen indicating whether it's on or off we also have our parking brake pull on the bottom of that to engage it and with your foot on the brake pedal push on the top of it to disengage it brake hold button here when you're driving and you push that button and turn that feature on when you come up to a stoplight and come to a stop the vehicle will hold the brakes for you and you can actually take your foot off the brake pedal and just sit there at the stoplight as soon as the light goes green simply put your foot on the gas pedal and the vehicle will release the brakes and continue forward moving on to the steering wheel we have our cruise control and some of our driver assistance settings here our cruise control power button essentially is this main here pressing main turns that cruise on you'll see ACC and LKAS up at the top those stand for adaptive cruise control and lane keep assist system to use the cruise control simply press the main button to turn it on once you're up to speed push set to set the speed once the speed has been set you can push the plus sign to speed up the minus sign to slow down and then we have a cancel button and then resume up at the top because this vehicle is equipped with adaptive cruise control this button here allows us to adjust the distance that we would like to maintain with the vehicles in front of us there are four intervals there four three two and one four bars would be the greatest distance maintained with the vehicles in front of you one bar would be the closest distance between vehicles in front of you what the vehicle will do is given your set speed and your set distance speed itself up and slow itself down as necessary to move with the flow of traffic for you this last button here is our steering assist so you'll see when we press that the icon that shows up at the top of the screen if you have clearly marked road lines on the street you're driving on and drift out of your lane the vehicle can alert you to that and if you don't correct yourself it will nudge you back into your lane Looking at the left side of the steering wheel here, these buttons along the bottom all pertain to our hands-free system with our Bluetooth. So we have the button to answer our phone call, hang up or decline an incoming call, and then our voice command to give the vehicle command to place a call to one of your contacts or dial a specific number. We also have volume for the audio here and the plus and minus. And then we have the seek buttons here, which will cycle through our presets left and right. We also have a home button, a back button, and a scroll wheel here, which is also clickable. Pressing that home button opens up the display here on the left side of the screen, and we can then use this scroll wheel, just by scrolling up and down on that, to cycle through different sets of information. Once you've selected the one you'd like to display, simply click the middle of that scroll wheel to display it. We have tachometer, we have range and fuel economy information here. To reset those, simply press and hold on that scroll wheel. We have average speed and elapsed time. If we scroll through that, it will cycle us between trip A and trip B as well. We have the audio section, the phone section, uh, traffic sign detection. So if you have a speed limit available, it can display that for you driving support and this just shows us if we're using that adaptive cruise control or that steering assist for the lane keep system displays that information there this is the driver attention level if the vehicle believes that you're driving in such a manner that it thinks you're drowsy it will uh, give you an indication to pull over and take a break we have maintenance we can reset these maintenance items as necessary, things like oil changes, filters, things like that. And this is something that if you go to a shop that they would, would do for you as necessary. Safety support, you'll see there we can cycle through our other driver assistance systems, as in the road departure mitigation. And that would be our alert if we were to drift out of the lane. We have our blind spot information. 
blind spot would display an orange icon in the side view mirror if there was a vehicle present in your blind spot. And we have our collision mitigation braking system. If we're coming up on slower or stopped traffic and not slowing down the vehicle, we'll intervene if necessary by applying the brakes. Last thing we have are warnings, if there was a door open or something like that, but nothing to display there currently. Looking behind the steering wheel, we have our windshield wipers on this side. Push that stock up for just a single swipe. Click down for intermittent, which you can then adjust here with this ring. Then we have low speed and high speed there. For the spray for that washer, for that wiper, pull the stock towards you and hold it for as long as you'd like the spray to continue. Looking at the left side, we have our headlight controls here. We have the off position, our parking lights, auto lights, and our low beams, but turned on manually. If you put the lights in the auto function, they'll come on at night as soon as it's dark enough out and turn off during the day. And then you'll also have daytime running lights present during the day, so you're visible to other drivers. We have fog lights as well. See the icon there as we turn those on. We have brights. Simply push the stock away from you to turn them on. Pull it towards you to flash them. Looking down to the left side here, we have a trip button. Pressing that cycles that trip computer down at the base of the screen. If you hold it when you're on one of those trip odometers, it will reset it. To the right of that, we have a small scroll wheel here which allows us to adjust the brightness of the gauges and the backlighting inside here for the gauge cluster. Down below we have a button to turn off the traction control, which is on by default every time that you start the vehicle. And we have a button here to access, like we saw earlier, those driver assistance systems quickly. Looking at the door, we have our window switches, our window locks, our door locks and our mirror adjustments. Simply slide this to the right or to the left to choose the mirror and then use the control pad to adjust it. We have trunk release down there and you'll see hood release just down by my foot there. Just underneath the door handle we do have driver's seat memory presets. Push that set button and then push the number that you're going to be. There's one and two and you'll see that each key has driver two and the other key would be driver one. So those pertain to those respective presets there. So use the key that pertains to or connects to whichever number that you're gonna, you're going to use and set as your settings. Looking up above, we do have underneath the rear view mirror here, home link buttons for the garage door. You can program your remote to be one of these three buttons so you don't have to keep the remote in the car with you. And then we have the power button for the auto dimming function of our rear view mirror. And looking up above, we have our sunroof controls. So you can click that back to open the sunroof, click it forward all the way to close it, and if we push straight in the middle of it, that will tilt open for you. We have dome lights and a switch to determine if the doors will turn the dome lights on when they're opened and turn them off when they're closed. And then we have a small glasses case just behind it there. Those are the primary features of this 2018 Honda Accord EXL. If you have any further questions, please refer to us at waltersautosales.com. I'm sorry, that's waltersautos.com. Or give us a call at 269 375-7008. Thank you. Have a nice day.